In general, there are three broad categories of guitar strings that need to be explained, understood, and sometimes ignored. Your choice of heavy, medium, or light gauge strings will depend on your style of playing and the kind of musical genre that you're interested in playing on the guitar. That's the short answer. Hello and welcome. If you've just dropped in and you're new here, my name is Michael, and this video is part of my free guitar lessons for beginners playlist and you'll see how this fits in if you check out the playlist which is here. This is my Takamine G series guitar and recently I broke a G string and it got me thinking I thought ah oh, I remember now when I first started playing the guitar many many years ago I used to break strings all the time it's a common occurrence either because you're playing too hard or you you know hit the strings too hard or for a number of reasons you break strings maybe you've got the wrong gauge so I did a, a, a video on this guitar a while back about how to restring your guitar so I'm not going to revisit that if you want to see how to maintain your guitar take a look at this video here and it will show you how to take it apart you know take all the strings off clean it all up clean up the fretboard all that kind of stuff but I'm not going to go over that here today we're just looking at string gauges so what's the difference you've got heavy strings medium strings and light strings light strings are easier to bend like that the thing about breaking strings is it's incredibly frustrating it's irritating it slows you down so the obvious solution is always have some spare strings lying around and don't discard your old strings either because in a pinch they can get you out of trouble so if you, when you're changing your strings to new strings, which is a, a good thing to do every now and again, keep the old ones. Uh, and at a pinch, you can use them if you can't get to a shop. There's always Amazon. I'll put links down below into uh, the Amazon store if you want to get some strings. So the advice that a lot of people give you is to stick with one set of strings, one gauge. So you either all heavy strings or all medium strings or all light strings. But, you know, like anything in, in life, some of these rules are meant to be broken. And a lot of bands, particularly heavy metal bands, use heavy strings on the bass strings, EAD, and they'll use light strings on the treble strings, these ones here, GBE. One famous person who comes to mind is uh, Nick Hammett out of Metallica, and he uses light strings on the uh, treble strings because they're easier to bend. So this whole thing got me thinking about heavy, heavy metal, heavy strings, where does that all come from? Now, the idea of heavy metal, to me, when I was, because I've been around for quite a long time, if you try to look up the idea of heavy metal, where the concept came from, I seem to remember from the 60s that heavy metal meant heavy strings. Controversial? I don't know. But that's what, I, that's what I remember. But there was a couple of bands that made heavy metal very, very popular. There was Steppenwolf. Uh, one track they made was Born To Be Wild. And in there, in the lyrics of Born To Be Wild, they, they talk about heavy metal on the road. Uh, but I remember, I seem to remember, correct me if I'm wrong, but I seem to remember that heavy metal was referring to heavy string gauges on your guitar. I don't know, I could be wrong. Black Sabbath did the same thing. Black Sabbath used a lot of heavy strings. So why would you use heavy strings? That's the point, right? I'm trying to get to it. I'm getting there eventually. The reason for heavy strings is you can bash the living daylights out of them and they won't break, generally, right? And a lot of heavy metal bands, they play very aggressively. They, they're smacking the living daylights out of the, uh, the strings and they don't want to be changing them every five minutes. So... Heavy strings are more durable, they're stronger. There's a trade-off. There is a trade-off because according to your guitar setup, if you have heavy gauge strings, they vibrate a lot more. And so your fingerboard action will be harder to play in a lot of respects because you'll have to have a wider gap between the string and the fretboard. So lighter gauge strings allows you to lower the action it's a lot easier to play lighter gauge easier to play lower action 
Now you might recall this guitar from this video, I lowered the action here. Because this is a Takamine and Takamine in Japanese means a high place or a high peak. And a lot of you guys wrote in the comments, my Takamine is very difficult to play because the action is very high. So I showed you how to lower the action by lowering this bridge, right? Shaving this bridge down. And when I'd done it in that video, I actually looked at it and I thought, you know what, I could, I could get that down even lower. And I did by the simple thing. You're not gonna believe this. And when I put the thing back together, I looked across here. I don't suppose you can see it, but the action was about three mil high. And I thought that's a bit high. And I did say at the time, there's a little shim underneath there. There it is, that's the shim. So I was playing it and the guitar was easier to play after I did the maintenance. But I thought to myself, you know, if I took that shim out, it'd go even lower. And that's what I did. When I broke the string, I thought I'll take this opportunity to either lower that bridge again some more, just by filing it down, or I'll take the shim out and see what happens. And I must have guessed pretty well when I did it, because when I took that shim out, it is so much easier to play again. It was easy, I mean, after I'd done the first uh, shaving down of that thing, it was uh, easier to play. And now, it's just a dream. The gap between the low E string and the 12th fret should be about 2.8 millimeters. But if you have light strings on, like this has, you can lower it down. This is about two mil. There's the 12th fret where my thumb is. That's another good reason for having light gauge strings. Plus the fact, if you're playing with light strings, you can bend a lot easier. It's a lot brighter, the sound is a lot brighter. The heavier the gauge string, the more, the deeper the strings become. So it depends on the, the kind of music you're trying to play. There are conventions that people say you should never mix your string gauges. But that's the whole point about conventions, right? They're meant to be broken. And by mixing up your string gauges, like those guys in the metal, heavy metal field do, you can come up with different kinds of tunes, different kinds of sounds, different kinds of music. So mixing up your strings, gauges, Try it, see what happens. Okay, so this is a steel string guitar. And uh, if you're wondering why I'm laughing, I've just done five outtakes on this. The strings are steel and they are wrapped in a, a, a thing called phosphor bronze. But with these strings that I've got here, these are Diodario, I noticed that the G string isn't wrapped. I don't know if that's a common thing, but I've never noticed that before. I've never noticed that before, but they sound great. These these are lightweight strings, and uh, according to to um, Diodario, they give you a warm, bright, and balanced tone. Let's have a listen. Yeah. Now I'm talking about lightweight strings on a low action guitar. You have to do the work, either that or you have to go and get someone to do it for you, but get your saddle lowered, lower your strings, and then playing and practicing becomes a joy. It shouldn't be painful, right? It should be fun. Well, we're very lucky these days because we've got all these wonderful steel strings. Imagine what it was like back in the days when you had to use catgut. I don't even want to think about what that's all about. But I think it was the, the intestines of some kind of animal that they used to use. But steel strings have been around for quite a long while and uh, they're brilliant. I could get into all the, uh, the, the different frequencies that these sound at, but you know, that's boring. Just sounds great. I hope you can hear how this sounds. Listen to the sustain on this guitar. 
it just goes on and on and on. It's just. If you found this video useful, interesting or whatever, why don't you think about subscribing? That's all I've got for you today. Stay well, keep safe, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye now.